if you can keep the customers that you already have um, and even increase their spend with you, over time your business is going to grow. If you're acquiring new customers but bleeding them off, right, they're not coming back, they're not repeat purchasing, um, you know, that's gonna make it much, much more difficult to grow the business over time. So how do we model retention? Uh, there are a few different ways. There's no, depending on the type of, you know, the structure of your business, there's no silver bullet to say, you know, this is the one definition of retention, this is the one way to model it out. The kind of key thing that you'll have to do, um, you'll wanna do for any type of retention, modeling is generate a date spine um, where you have data for every user or buyer, whatever you call them, right? Your, whatever you call your customers. Um, you have a row for every user and every date period for which you wanna calculate retention. The, the key issue that you run into when trying to calculate retention is if you're just summing up a history of, say, your orders by the date they were placed, you're going to have a lot of gaps necessarily in that data set, right? And those are the gaps that you're trying to understand, you know, what, what happened in, that, in those gaps if they didn't purchase, right? Do we want to call that a, a, a um, churn, basically? So you need to generate a date spine by whatever period right here, we're talking about weeks, um, that could be months, whatever that is. If you wanna generate a date spine, um, let me pull an example for you real quick. And this is generally what our, you know, a date sign that, sign that we would set up uh, would look like. We'd probably use uh, generate date array in BigQuery to generate a, a well, an array of, of weeks and then just this just applies like for every date what week did it belong to right so we can take that date spine here join our transactions to it and basically what we have then is for every user we have um, you know a full you know comprehensive list of what did they do for every week right so then we can whatever metrics we want to calculate we can sum up you know, take their transactions from this week, right? And that applies to transactions created here. Um, and we'd probably want to sum this, right? Sum and group it. And we'd probably want to group it here by all of those, right? So once we have, you know, this date spine of what did each customer do in every date period, then we can do a quick lag um, to say, basically a window function here, right? What did they do the previous week? Um, so for each user, for each week, what were their transactions created this week? What are their lifetime react transactions created? So we can see like, are they new? Is this their first week? And then what did they do last week? Um, and those windows are just you know, we define a weekly window at the bottom of the query here, in BigQuery at least, um, and we partition by basically, let's just say the user ID here, and we order by week start ascending. So if you lag um, one week, and this could be month or quarter, whatever your you know, period you're looking at, uh, then we get the transactions from the previous week. So first we have our date spine here, right, where we're calculating values, populating values for every date period for every customer and then we do um, you know kind of a window to look at sorry to look at what did they do last period and what have they done overall and then you know the rubber hits the road where we can calculate if um, if this is their first week basically if the transactions they created this week are the same as their entire life as a customer um, and they have done some, you know, done that behavior, then this is just a flag field, right? 1L0 and as bookkeeping new. So that means this is a new, um, let's just call this new, bookkeeping is unnecessary here. And let's call this, so this is just a flag field, right? So this is the count of users that are in this bucket because again we have one one row per user or buyer um, and so we can sum this up 
to get our count of new buyers for that period. Same thing for churn, right? If a buyer did this behavior in the previous period, right? But they did not in the current period, then you'd call that a churn. If they did the behavior in um, the current period and they did not in the previous period, um, and they didn't just activate, this is a, a little wrinkle that we don't really need here, um, then we'll call them a reactivation. Um, because I guess we could say here, uh, transactions created does not equal transactions created lifetime. So that means, you know, they've, they've purchased or done the transaction before, um, this isn't their first week active, but they weren't active last week and they were active this week. So that means we'll call them a reactivation. And then uh, the last bucket would be retentions, right? So you want to map out um, new customers, churned customers, reactivated customers, and then retained customers. So that's if they were active this week and they were also active the previous week then again, we'll call them a retention. If they weren't, you know, don't call them a retention. So this is really the three part process. And I'm actually going to, um, I'm only gonna talk about one other method of retention because I think this method that I, you know, we just walked through here is really applicable for any, you can swap out the date spine, right? Whether you're talking about weeks or months or quarters or years, you can talk about, you can swap out, are you talking about users or members or, um, you know, subscribers or customers or buyers, whatever you call people, right, who, who are patrons of your business. This three-step process is going to work for any type of, um, any type of business, right? So you have, first you have your date spine where you generate values for every buyer. Um, then you have the window where you um, basically calculate what did they do this period? What did they do last period? And what have they done over all periods? And then you just have some simple if statements to say, based on what they did this period, last period, and lifetime, are they new, churned, reactivated, or retained? Um, I really don't think I can <laughs> say, I don't think I've ever been able to, or anyone on the Coding is for Losers team has ever been able to come up with a more succinct way to do retention. Um, so this is the, the best that we've found. I will, that's really it for this video, but I will, if you stick, if you want to stick around, I will talk about a bonus wrinkle case, um, where if you only have a, a transaction order history, but you're trying to look at subscription retention, um, say you just have like Stripe orders, right? But within those are a bunch of subscriptions. Uh, there is an interesting method, um, that you can use to kind of bootstrap subscription retention. So if, you, if you're interested in that, stick around and I'll get into that. If not, um, yeah, there's, there's links to the blog here. This blog post, this will be embedded in a blog post. And this code that I just walked through will be in the post. Let's get into this weird case where if you have a bunch of transactions that are just transaction info, right? You don't have anything about a subscription in it, you just know that it is a subscription order because it's maybe it's tagged like that. And then you have, um, but you want to model out what's subscription retention here, right? But all you have is just a string of orders. You don't have, you don't know anything about when is the subscription canceled, when is it created, what was the frequency, any of that stuff. Um, or maybe you just know the frequency, right? You can guess the frequency. Um, but you want to basically say, like, was a customer retained or did they churn in any given period? The, the important thing to do there, just like with any retention, is generate a date spine. So what we can do here <laughs> is use gen generate date array to generate a date spine across all subscription frequencies, right? So for every customer, you can generate a sub uh, date spine of all possible payment dates based on their subscription frequency. Um, and yeah, by generating this series. 
I'll leave, I'll have the code in the post. This is really something that you have to kind of play around with, but this is a really helpful thing if you have just a series of orders and you want to generate retention stats. Um, so basically the, the key join here is to join up your date spine, right? All of your subscription dates here to left join all of your payments to it um, and filter out planned payment dates that are in the future, right? Because this date spine will just generate, you know, until your end period, right? All of the dates that you want to calculate churn for. So that's really it. Generate the date spine, left join your actual orders history right to it. Um, and then if, if there's a subscription period where the order date actual order date here, right, isn't found within the planned subscription period from this date spawn, then it will basically just call it, call that customer churned for that, uh, you know, planned payment period. So again, something to play around with, but I found that this type of date spawn uh, setup can be very helpful if you're kind of in a corner, right, where you need to calculate churn on subscription products, but you don't have any information about the subscription. So really interesting topic. Um, hope you dive into it more, take these code samples, make them your own. And um, you know where to find me, right? At Losers HQ on Twitter. And as always in the Coding is for Losers Slack group. Take care.